Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now January 22nd of 2024 and there's been a lot of back and forth happening between Disney, Marvel Studios, and even the creatives behind Deadpool 3, such as the writers like Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, along with director Sean Levy. And let's not forget about Ryan Reynolds, who also has a deep impact on the general direction of Deadpool 3 and where it's all going, and how he has basically been leading the entire cast and crew to really put their foot down down and stand up against Disney to really save the third act of the third Deadpool film. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So one thing about Ryan Reynolds that I think a lot of fans really do congratulate him for is that he is willing to really speak his mind against a corporation, against a studio as big as Disney that has really been wreaking havoc on the production of the third Deadpool film, mainly the third act. We've been talking about this for a while and why I believe... If things keep going this way, the third movie could very well be an emotional roller coaster. It could start off very well, it could have a solid second act, and then everything falls apart in the third act. You know, we're almost falling into a similar situation to what happened with Blade 3, right? Blade Trinity, which ironically also had Ryan Reynolds in that film. I don't know if you guys know about that, but looking forward here, there's a lot of things going on with Bob Iger and the current Marvel Phase 7 slate and everything else happening with Phase 6. There's a lot to discuss, so let's get into exactly what Ryan Reynolds recently did against Disney. Now, to top things all off, all right, with the Deadpool 3 drama only getting worse for Disney between Ryan and the Disney heads, one major development involves how Ryan recently cost Disney hundreds of millions of dollars after a recent meeting took place between writers Rhett Reese, Paul Wernick, and Ryan with the Disney heads, and the rest over at Marvel Studios in the wake of the Deadpool 3 struggles. Now, as it turns out, in a significant update to this situation, not only was Ryan removed from multiple Marvel projects by Disney, but was, however, surprisingly left with a handful of important projects for both Marvel Phase 6 and Phase 7 that would tap into the Mutant Era timeline and the character of Deadpool specifically. A shocking turn of events that recently happened involved how Ryan Reynolds reportedly walked away from two very important Marvel projects that were planned by Bob Iger and the Disney head that, of course, were to feature Deadpool and Wade Wilson, importantly speaking. The two projects he recently walked away from were said to be the spin-off to the X-Men movie that is already in the works that was going to feature another team-up format between both Deadpool and Gambit this time. What caused Disney to shut down this project and cancel it altogether within a matter of days had much to do with the fact that Ryan didn't enjoy the direction that Disney was going with when he was involved in the pitch for the film that Disney was planning to announce by the end of this year. Disney was also planning to provide fans a different take on the Gambit character, however specifics about that are unknown. Since Ryan decided to drop out of this project, Disney cancelled it practically on the spot and is no longer part of their roster and was good, of course, to somewhat serve as a Deadpool 3 sequel without adding the fourth number. Now, Disney analysts projected that this was going to easily garner hundreds of millions of dollars worldwide based on its planned rated R format and Gambit at the forefront and the return of Deadpool on the side with the introduction of that Gambit character on the big screen. The other project that Ryan turned down that Disney analysts projected would also garner a decent profit in the hundreds of millions at the box office featuring Deadpool was going to be an X-Men spin-off film focusing entirely on the X-Force with cameos planned for classic X-Men characters. However, as for this project, Ryan wasn't getting Disney to agree with him on the finances of his payout for this planned movie in, of course, the wake of all of the conversations that took place and walked out on all of it. And Disney decided to axe this as well as they needed Deadpool to make the movie work out in the long run. The reason why the Mutant Era slate is not being put out officially or hinted at by Kevin Feige or Bob Iger has a lot to do with this drama as Disney is now completely reworking their ideas and plans from Marvel Phase 7 and how it will incorporate the mutants, X-Men, and the X-Force entirely. 
Now where it stands right now, Ryan is only attached to two Marvel projects, as opposed to his 10 project plan that was going to be massive for Ryan. Disney removed him, of course, from six, and Ryan walked out on the two most important ones in return. The two films combined were planned to redefine Marvel with two rated R films in one year for the rest of the 2020s to set up a new trend of rated R Marvel films that are now in complete shambles. Now the two films were going to be announced by Kevin Feige and Bob Iger around the fourth quarter of this year to be specific around December. Now guys, let me say one thing about this real quick. Now. The fact that Disney is trying to create a trend of rated R films and specifically how they wanted him back for those rated R movies specifically is what they believed was going to work out for them in the long run. Now, we already know that they're trying to hop on this. They're doing this with Deadpool 3. Yes, it's rated R, but seemingly it's going to be a rated R light film. What do I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, they're essentially watering it down. They already deleted very violent scenes for Wolverine during the events of World War II in Vietnam, among other wars in the first act, something that deeply upset Hugh Jackman as an actor. We have a lot more to discuss on that as well in the coming days. But what's interesting about this further is the fact that you have Blade 2025, which is also going to be another rated R film. So you got this year's Deadpool 3, and you've got Blade, which are the beginning of Disney's new trend of their overall take on rated R films. So, in the long run, Ryan really stabbed Disney in the back. You know, first they struck. You know, first they took action against Ryan. They removed him from several projects after all the Deadpool 3 drama left him with only a few to work on as a co-writer and to also star in. And in light of all of the third act nonsense for Deadpool 3, Ryan decided to act himself and walked away from those two big X-Men movies, all right, which were spin-off films to the main X-Men film, and really left Disney in a living hell, essentially, is what happened. Now, again, this is a prime example of an actor finally standing his ground and standing up against Disney. It has not been a good 12 months for Disney. You know, in the span of this past year, we've had Elon Musk, we've had uh, we, South Park Studios and Paramount, as well as The Daily Wire, really calling out Disney for their nonsense directly. And all of this took place within their 100th year anniversary, and it's all bleeding into 2024 as it speaks. So, anyway, this is a very big deal, and it goes to show you why we're not hearing too much about Mutant Era material, why there's a lot of drama happening behind the scenes, and how they're reworking the entire slate of any kind of importance or you know, uh, insertion of the mutants or the X-Men into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, I would love to hear what you all have to say about this ongoing situation with Ryan Reynolds. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later. And